as the population grows older that many more people will have dementia. The default position for many people who are looking after someone with dementia is that that person is advised by GPs or hospital doctors or whoever that they've now reached a stage that they need to go into a care home and I think what we're trying to say is that that isn't an inevitable thing. So what we try to do is to have a service that will comprehensively assess people, plan ahead and coordinate the care. The observation from all over the place is that when people have dementia care is not brought together. The psychiatrist does a bit, the GP does a bit, the social worker does a bit, the OT does a bit, but they never really communicate and there's no one who pulls that together. Our referral criteria are pretty simple really and based on a very simple hypothesis anybody cared for at home with advanced dementia should have someone to support them, someone to co coordinate that care. Historically, dementia services in our, um, our local boroughs have been managed very separately to community health services. The mental health services within the Trust were organised um, within boroughs, so we had three mental health directorates, one in Greenwich, one in Bexley and one in Bromley. Decisions were made to uh, move away from geographical uh, directorates into functional mental health directorates. So in terms of um, the advanced dementia services that we've been developing, they started when I was working as a service manager in Greenwich um, and really came out of a recognition by one of our senior clinicians, Dr Trelaw, that um, it was very important to look at, um, to take a holistic approach to uh, someone's care. Someone in a focus group last week said, before you were involved, we got everything from everybody, but no one talked to each other. And after you were involved, it all came together and made so much more sense. I was initially involved in uh, the service run uh, in Greenwich by Dr Trelaw. Uh, I was involved in the research that he's done on his own project, interviewing carers of people with advanced dementia. So I knew firsthand from them how it feels like being under a service like that. Just at the same time as the new directorate was being thought about and set up, um, the opportunity to apply within the directorate for a DARSE fellow came up and Dr Trelaw recognised that this could possibly be an opportunity for us to roll out something similar into Bexley. I was very interested in running an advanced dementia or care at home service or palliative care service for people with dementia. It was this handful of people who thought let's do things differently, let's test out if we could work collaboratively and um, look at the physical and the psychological needs of people going through a very, very difficult part of their lives, what can we do together that will get better outcomes and improve uh, the patient and carer experiences? So we made it as meaningful clinically as we could possibly do. And this means maybe that the process map is very simple. <laughs> Just go see patients. <laughs> Actually, at the same time um, as the new directorate was set up, uh, the Trust was also taking on board community health services. So the fact that we now had um, colleagues to work with actually within our own organisation has really oiled the wheels. In some cases, probably most cases, it's about having one point of contact, one person. In other cases, it's about knowing that if, if there was contact with one or maybe another person, that they're actually communicating. I remember one particular lady found uh, a lot of comfort in the fact that um, she wanted to sit and hold your hand. So you, you, could, you could sit with her and actually do that. And then at the same time, um, speak to the family, speak to the family, see how they're getting on and whether there was any sort of queries or concerns that they had. Care is less fragmented. People know who to call on and then somebody makes things happen, much more seamless. So that anxiety and stress is removed for the families. The comments overwhelmingly are uh, very positive indeed. I think people have really um, valued um, having access to a, a service that offers them the opportunity to keep the, the person with dementia at home. Although the, the falling depression is not yet yeah. happening.
Uh, we have had discussions with people in the acute sector, yes, yes, and they, you know, on an anecdotal basis, yes, they would say, yes, for this patient you've saved money. It usually costs a good £2,500 minimum for every hospital admission. And in terms of social care, if we can uh, delay or prevent people having to go into residential or nursing care homes earlier, then that is financial savings for them. So if you avoid a care home by supporting someone at home, then actually you're avoiding significant costs. We think we've saved a good two and a half million quid by doing better quality care. So, um, to see it develop and to um, deliver such good results has been really fantastic. I genuinely believe it's down to the clinicians that have been involved. They're very, very caring people and they have made this happen through working together and they've almost acted as a magnet for other people who wanted to work in very similar ways.